Are we giving it away? Um, what are we giving away and why and to whose benefit? Um, uh, and, I, and luckily there are other people on the team that know much more than I do about search engine optimization and indexing and non-canonical referencing and things like that, which then you can control more about what happens. Sorry, see, should have. You can see the project uh, beginning, beginning to happen. Uh, and on that note, many thanks. No, thank you. Thank you. Now, now it's really with great pleasure I'm going to invite uh, Jim Fanning, a colleague from Scotland, up, up, up to stage. And it is one of these strange things that we, we, probably meet, we probably meet more on the road down here than we do actually uh, up, up in Scotland, although, although we, share, we share the same building. Welcome, Jim. Sure, thanks for that. Joe, can I just say I've done my media training as well, right? So they did tell me that I shouldn't wear my glasses on my head because that's off-putting. Um, and they also said that I speak far too quickly as well. So if I, don't go, too, sorry, if I do go too quickly, um, just raise a hand and get me to, to slow down a bit. Um, presentation this morning, you know, the keynote on, uh, on narratives, I found particularly uh, interesting. I think when Skinner talked about uh, bringing the same level of control to the classroom that you would find in the kitchen, he obviously um, you know, hadn't seen my kitchen. Um, so anyway, you know, that whole thing about narratives, yeah, particularly interesting. I'm going to talk about a piece of work that's um, taking place up in Scotland at the moment um, around mobile technologies and the use of mobile technologies in, uh, in school classrooms. It's a piece of work that my, uh, my team is, uh, is involved in. Uh, I work for Education Scotland, uh, which is an agency of the, uh, the, Scottish, uh, the Scottish Government. And um, Jim Fanning, Head of Emerging Technologies, uh, is my title. Um, Education Scotland provides broad national uh, guidance that is developed locally, you know, so it really isn't a case of um, folks sitting at the centre saying, we know best and this is how you do it. Um, and, and I think, again, that is an interesting uh, narrative as well. I, um, prior to joining Education Scotland last year, had spent the best part of 10 years um, working down south um, in Kent and Sussex as an assistant head teacher in a school, um, leading on the development of technology in that school. And in the, uh, the year before I moved up, to, uh, moved up to Scotland to take up post, there was a major piece of work around the use of um, mobile technologies and the development of mobile technologies in that particular school. Um, and somebody came up with a, uh, with a pot of money. Um, head teacher said, look, pot of money is available, and I really think we, uh, we should be pushing out the boat big time in terms, of, uh, in terms of mobile tech because we don't want to be seen as a dinosaur school. We want people to look in um, and, in terms of narrative, actually say... That school is a 21st century school. Um, you know, wherever you go in school, you will find the, uh, the use of mobile tech. So, you know, I think that, that's an interesting narrative. Um, I sent members of my team, um, you know, from that school out into various schools down south to kind of look at um, schools that said, look, we've cracked it. We've actually, uh, we've got mobile tech. Um, you know, go and look at the, uh, uh, the headlines in the Times. You know, we've had some good publicity in the Times and the Times Ed, so we must be doing a good job. But in actual fact, when you got into those schools, um, you found a very different, um, the, re the reality was different to the, uh, to the narrative that was being told in both the, uh, the local and the, uh, and the national press. So you would go into schools where they said we've given every youngster an iPad, well they hadn't given every youngster an iPad, um, they actually had a charging model in place where, you know, for parents that could afford something like £25 or £30 a month, um, their youngster got an iPad that was theirs after, uh, after three years. For the other youngsters, you know, in those classes, whose parents um, either couldn't afford to or didn't want to, um, you know, stump up that kind of, uh, that kind of dosh. Uh, well, yeah, OK, you know, we've got five or six uh, um, iPads that have been purchased by the, by the school, um, and, you know, they are, they are there ready charged, uh, well, most of the time, um, if you want to uh, use them in lesson time. Uh, now, I actually called this, this presentation um, Getting It Right for Every Child. Um, getting It Right for Every Child is, is a social agenda um, policy up in Scotland uh, that really focuses on inclusion. Um, and I would say to you that if, if your school policy is that, you know, one, we're going to charge you to, to, uh, to have your own iPad, and for those that can't afford it, um, we're going to have those iPads that have been purchased by school, and you know they, they might be available, they might not be available. There's not you know a great deal that is um, that's inclusive about that uh, that particular approach. You know, and certainly again, you know, time and time again, when you talk about um, using mobile technologies, 
within education, and you've kind of got to drag people back from actually talking about the tech. You know, and again, this is just reflecting on my experience down south. You know, going into schools time and time again, rather than talking about the learning and the teaching, um, people, you know, teachers by and large tended to um, to be dragged towards the tech itself. We want this piece of tech. We want iPads because they are cool and sexy. Um, we want this particular piece of tech because, yeah, you know, we've got one terabyte of storage space uh, online, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that isn't what it's about. Um, the actual narrative. Um, that, I, um, that I talk about when I do presentations in Scotland is one that is built around um, learning and teaching. It's one that's built around curriculum for excellence. Curriculum for excellence is all about the kind of society that we want now and in the future and the kind of citizens that we want um, Scottish learners and Scottish youngsters to be. And that's where the conversation starts up there. It doesn't start with the, uh, with the technology, or it shouldn't. As I say, you know, time and time again when you do the rounds, um, you know, you will get dragged back into that narrative about the uh, about the hardware and the software, rather than those discussions. Um, you know, about the kind of learning that you want to take place, the kind of teaching that you want to take place, and really the kind of society that you um, sorry, the kind of society that you want to uh, that you want to live in. So anyway, um, Education Scotland, we've got a clear um, a clear policy um, focus in terms of uh, in terms of the technology. The cabinet secretary has said that. Uh, when we, when we use technology, it should be about um, a change in the culture of use of that technology. Um, we should be about improving um, confidence amongst learners, um, teachers, school leaders and parents. We should be promoting new you know, behaviours, there's not one behaviours, but promoting new behaviours for teaching. We should be deepening parental engagement um, and also strengthening the, uh, the position on hardware and, you know, and software associated with, um, with infrastructure uh, in, Scottish, um, in Scottish schools. To give you some idea of what the Scottish system looks like, 32 local authorities. Um, obviously, if you're up in um, Shetland, top, uh, top right-hand corner, Orkney, top left-hand corner, or the borders, or if you're in Aberdeen City, Glasgow City, or Edinburgh City, some of your, uh, some of your needs and some of your wants and some of your priorities will be very different in terms of that, uh, in terms of that technology. 673,000 um, Scottish learners, 2,500 schools, um, and 49,000 teachers. That's slightly out of date. Those figures are from, uh, are from last year. So that's what, the, uh, that's what the system looks like. It is 32 different local authorities. And again, you know, as I do the rounds and as my team has done the rounds from authority to authority, um, you know, individual authorities have taken different approaches to the, uh, to the use of mobile, uh, mobile technologies. What government does um, at the centre is um, do things like making sure that uh, the SWAN programme, Scottish Wide Area Network, that there is a system in place uh, for schools to effectively, um, effectively uh, access those uh, those online uh, resources through uh, you know through a high speed uh, broadband uh, program. Um, we've also got a national procurement framework that means that um, schools can um, can get good value for money when it comes to actually purchasing the uh, the kit itself. When it comes to national advice, um, if you go back about a year, you know over 2013, there was um, a whole conversation that took place with a range of Scottish um, stakeholders relating to the use of mobile technologies in schools. Now, again, you know, if I reflect you know, back south, in the school that I'd come from, we opened up a, uh, a discussion with parents, with teachers, uh, you know, with members of the local community in terms of the use of mobile technology in that particular school. What came back from parents time and time again was, uh, we don't want our kids to use mobile technologies in the classroom, whether it's their smartphones or tablet devices, because in actual fact, you know, we read the press, we see how dangerous this technology is. We see how it can uh, it can detract from uh, from learning itself. Um, the majority of teachers, um, you know, when we talked about uh, technology, you know, again down south, said that uh, we want that mobile tech in the classroom. You know, for for the following reasons. You know, in terms of the way that it can benefit uh, it can benefit learning learning and teaching. There is um, a piece of guidance uh, that's been published by Scottish government. Um, it came out um, at Christmas 2013, and you know, as it said, it is guidance on developing policies to promote the safe and responsible use of mobile technology in schools. Um, it's not Scottish Government saying, there is the policy, that is what you must do. Um, it's actually Scottish Government saying, there is guidance, there is advice, and at a local level, you need to work with your learners, with your teachers, with your parents, with other members of the community, to actually come up with, um, with local guidance. Because we all know that uh, you know, learning um, is context driven. 
Um, and, you know, it simply, it, it wouldn't work. It's no good having a central policy, you know, if up in Aberdeen City, your needs are different. So the, um, the whole thrust of that particular document is to offer guidance and support. You know, and one of the statements in the document is, engaging the whole school community, staff, children and young people and parents in policy development is the most effective means of ensuring engagement with and commitment to that, uh, that particular policy. And if you want one example of a school that's, um, that's taken that forward, Elgin Academy um, you know, has worked very effectively with all of those stakeholders to, uh, to design its own specific um, local school policy in relation to the, uh, the use and support for the use of mobile technologies in the, uh, in the classroom. Um, Joe, I'm going to ask you this question, probably put you on the spot here. That's an article about, uh, about tablet PCs, and it says the tide is turning towards tablet PCs, and um, it makes loads of predictions in terms of uh, how tablet PCs um, will lead to, um, you know, greater personalised learning, flexible learning, anytime, anywhere learning, and all of that. Would you have any idea, do you want to guess when that, uh, when that article was actually published? It's 10 years ago, in actual fact. Um, that was back in 2003, 2004. Um, and those devices that you see those sixth formers using are um, its research machines. Research machines back in 2003 um, produced a tablet device. It cost about £1,000 each. Um, and again, they, they made all those, uh, those uh, predictions in relation to, uh, to mobile tech. I think sometimes we do forget that the tech's been around longer than what we think. Um, I did read something in the week that said the first smartphone was actually produced about 20 years ago. And yet, 20 years later, we're still, you know, actually talking in schools about how we should use this uh, this new technology and how we can use it effectively. Um, so, tablet PCs, again, yeah, um, at least uh, at least 10 years. So, what do we know um, about the use of mobile tech in um, in Scottish schools? Um, if you go back a year, um, my team worked with uh, a range of uh, local authorities. We invited um, representatives from seven different authorities into, uh, into the um, place called the Optima in Glasgow to take part in a learning conversation. Uh, and that conversation event uh, really aimed to map out what we understand about the use of mobile technology use in Scottish schools at the moment, uh, what we don't know, and what we are going to, uh, to do as a team to, uh, to kind of to take that forward, you know, and, and, and to find out more and to offer advice um, to uh, Scottish schools. Scottish Government did, um, over the past two years, um, fund Hull University to, to do some specific research into the use of uh, iPad devices in uh, a number of um, Scottish primary schools. Um, and Edinburgh City um, also uh, took on those Hull researchers to, uh, to get involved in that research. Um, one thing I should say, you know, in terms of talking to those, those researchers um, you know, after the event, uh, their underlying philosophy was that if you flood a school with mobile technology, um, if you give a primary school you know, sufficient iPads for every youngster, that's what affects the change in terms of teaching and learning. Um, I would argue something different than actual fact. I would argue that uh, you, know, you need to have the intention to change. You know, if that intention isn't there, it doesn't matter you know, how many iPads or smartphones or mobile devices you, uh, you flood a school with. It won't lead to the kind of changes that you, uh, that you may want. I'll give you a perfect example of that. Um, you know, it's like walking into a school, and I think it's been mentioned already, walking into a school where a youngster is using a tablet device to, to simply access an e-book, you know, Heinemann page 58. Well, what's the difference between accessing Heinemann page 58 on your mobile device um, to actually accessing Heinemann page 58, you know, in, in class um, as a, uh, a textbook? There is a danger that I think when you, uh, when you flood schools with, with that tech, um, without thinking it through properly, without having, um, you know, a, a kind of proper, um, you know, and fundamental... Um, aims in terms of how you want to teach the learning and the teaching and what you want to achieve through the use of that technology, you simply replicate old practice. You simply do what we've done in the past, but you do it in a better way. Um, so anyway, um, you know, the, the fundamental um, philosophy behind the, the Hull uh, approach was that flooding the school with technology would lead to change. Um, they actually said that the, uh, the biggest um, uh, impact that technology had was the fact that youngsters were actually able to take the tech home um, to engage their parents in what had been learned um, in school, you know, that day or that week or whatever. So it's an interesting piece of research. It is available uh, online, and obviously this presentation is going to go out, uh, you know, after this presentation. And I've um, 
all of the links, uh, all of the links are there. So in terms of that piece of work uh, that my team is doing at the moment, what do we know? Well, we know that Apple, um, Apple mobile devices are the most popular devices uh, in Scottish schools. Some, somewhere between 85 and 95% of all mobile devices in use, uh, depending on the authority, are, um, are Apple, uh, Apple devices. Um, we know that in a lot of cases, the requirements of corporate and education IT networks are very different. You know, and one of the real struggles is to actually you know, get that mobile tech out into schools um, and to get it used in a way that uh, teachers and learners want it to be used. Because in many cases, uh, local authority corporate services will say, no, sorry, you can't do that. Um, and obviously there's a challenge in schools to actually work with uh, the local IT corporate services to actually, um, uh, to actually work out solutions, uh, you know, in classroom, classroom solutions. Uh, teachers may not know where to find uh, advice or information about the mobile tech they're using in the classroom, and certainly about those, uh, those mobile applications. Uh, I think there's quite a few instances where teachers may be using apps without fully understanding some of the, uh, the data security issues relating to, uh, to the use of those apps in the classroom. And a lot of them rely on safe harbour agreements without actually understanding what a safe harbour uh, agreement uh, is. We know that approaches to safety and security issues differ from authority to authority. There is a system in Scotland um, called GLOW that is built around um, Office 365. And one of the features of Office 365 is it's obviously OneDrive um, that enables you to, uh, to upload your, your files, access them anytime, anywhere, and share them. Um, and yet there are a number of local authorities um, that will say, no, nope, sorry, um, on your mobile devices in school, you cannot access OneDrive because uh, we consider it to be a, uh, a security risk or a, uh, a, a security issue. Uh, you know, and again, you know, relying on one device, those, those authorities that have pushed out um, the, uh, the Apple devices um, are having difficulties at the moment actually accessing that range of Office 365 um, apps and tying them in with the, uh, with the Scottish internet, you know, the Glow, uh, Glow 365 um, product. What you tend to find during the rounds is that uh, education establishments are still operating around a desktop model of use. And by and large, the learners that they are teaching don't operate within that model. You know, by and large, those, uh, those learners are accessing their, uh, their smartphone devices and their, uh, and their tablet devices. Um, I've talked about, you know, local contexts. Um, if you go from authority to authority, you will find some, some interesting examples of uh, the approaches they've taken to the, uh, to the rollout of, uh, of mobile tech. Um, Edinburgh City, for example, every school in Edinburgh City is, uh, is Wi-Fi enabled. Um, about three years ago, they, um, they did a pilot scheme where they'd uh, actually given uh, one school um, a set of iPads, one school a set of Android devices, and one school a set of netbooks, and they spent a year actually evaluating the, uh, the use and the impacts of those different devices in those different schools. And the Edinburgh policy is now to actually um, focus on, uh, on Apple devices, um, on Apple uh, iPads. And there are something like 9,000 iPads in use across Edinburgh schools at the moment. And again, there are, uh, there are links there in relation to, um, to Edinburgh and the Edinburgh experience. Um, Edinburgh, um, it's, it's worthwhile visiting their website because uh, you know, over the past two to three years, they, uh, they have recorded in detail the approach that they've taken, how they've worked with staff, how they've worked with learners, parents, external agencies, and the impacts that uh, the use of that technology um, has had on, uh, on Edinburgh, Edinburgh schools. Aberdeen City, something similar uh, in Aberdeen City, except up in Aberdeen, um, they've taken what they would call a device agnostic approach. So there are something like 2,000 devices uh, in use uh, across uh, Aberdeen City schools. Um, Mainly Apple devices, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I think the uh, the ratio is something like three 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 to one. So the major the majority of devices that they uh, um, that they've pushed out are Apple, but they do have a device agnostic approach. So if a school wants to go for uh, you know an Android approach, um, they've got uh, support in place to ensure that that. Uh, uh, that that is the case. One school in Aberdeen um, has implemented a traffic light system in terms of uh, BYOD and BYOT approaches to uh, technology. So basically, uh, you know, when you go into the school, there are green zones, amber zones, and red zones. If you're in a green zone as a student, you can use the uh, you can use your mobile devices, your smartphones uh, at will. Um, in an amber zone, 
uh, you use it um, dependent on, on teacher permission and in a red zone, it, uh, it's actually um, uh, no go. Uh, can I just say to you, in terms of BYOD and, and BYOT, um, I have a feeling, um, although it's early days in terms of the work that my team is doing, uh, that that is a bit of a red herring, to be honest with you, in terms of um, school approaches to, to mobile tech. And I think there are a whole range of issues, uh, you know, forget the technical issues for a minute, but there are a whole range of issues in terms of um, equity and inequity in the classroom when schools start to take an approach uh, that does encourage youngsters to bring in their own tech and use their own tech in the classroom without actually um, putting in sufficient support for those youngsters that, uh, that don't have access to that, uh, to that kind of technology. So anyway, Aberdeen City, if you want me to highlight one school in particular, um, Isla High School, and again, this is back to that, that article that I uh, had shown earlier that said, you know, 10 years in terms of mobile tech. Um, for the past nine years, Isla High School has been uh, taking a one-to-one -one approach to the use of mobile tech in school, to actually making sure that every student um, in that school has uh, access to or ownership of um, their own mobile device. And again, you know, I can put you in touch with the, uh, you know, with the teachers and those who led on that particular, uh, that particular project. Um, but again, I think it's interesting looking at the, um, the way that uh, learning in Isla High School really... Um, you know, fulfills the principles of curriculum for excellence, you know, where learners really are at the heart of that, uh, that discussion about learning and the nature of learning and the style of learning that, uh, that should take place. Again, if you want to know more, um, there is a, uh, a Glow Scotland blog that, uh, you know, there will be loads of good examples of the way that mobile tech is, uh, is being used across, um, across Scottish schools. What we've discovered through the, uh, you know, these, these learning conversations, what we've discovered about what we don't know is that, um, you know, things like how well the teachers understand um, adoption frameworks in, the terms of, in terms of the use of mobile technology. I'll give you a good example of this, um, and it is a framework that isn't specifically related to mobile tech, um, but that, uh, that I've seen being used where teachers are using mobile technology to actually encourage youngsters to engage in after school discussions, you know, online about the learning that's taking place in the classroom. Um, Jilly Salmon, um, ex of the Open University, um, her five-step uh, model of, uh, of e-moderating is a model that I've seen applied to, uh, to those kind of online conversations that can be supported through the use of mobile tech. And yet most teachers, um, if you were to talk to them about the kind of um, you know, teaching and learning frameworks that they... Uh, they should work to or apply in terms of the use of that technology, um, most don't really understand uh, or have an awareness of those, uh, of those, um, those frameworks. Uh, my team, you know, again, asked questions like, where is the longitudinal research relating to the adoption and use of mobile technologies in the classroom? And that's an easy one to answer. You know, it simply isn't there. There are lots of case studies, but we all know, you know, in terms of case studies, unless you, uh, you build up a sufficient, uh, sufficient number of case studies, um, you won't really go anywhere in terms of understanding broadly what's happening uh, in relation to the, uh, to the, to the technology. Um, you know, questions like where, where, should, where should teachers look to for, uh, for advice and guidance and what kind of advice and guidance should be, uh, should be provided um, centrally? I've talked about BYOD and BYOT um, already in terms of um, that enabling or that approach enabling schools to, uh, to deliver access to mobile technologies. And also that whole big question around, you know, uh, teachers, are teachers able to rationalise the benefits of mobile tech and, and how it really can be used to, uh, to support learning, uh, learning outcomes? It's too easy to make assumptions. You know, I've been in a school where the senior management team, God bless senior management teams, have said, well, every learner in our school, every child has got a smartphone, but they don't in actual fact. You know, and it's really important that when schools start to, uh, uh, to explore the use of mobile tech, um, that they do engage learners, they do engage parents, they do engage wider stakeholders in relation to uh, um, you know, things like ownership you know, and uh, you know, how learners understand and how parents understand uh, the ways in which that mobile tech can be used to, uh, to support, uh, support uh, teaching and learning. If I can just finish with this. Um, I said the theme, and the theme hasn't really been, but the theme would be um, getting it right for every child. Um, back in 2009, um, HM Inspector of Education um, in Scotland uh, reported on key priorities for education in Scotland. It said that we should identify and tackle barriers to learning before they become entrenched. We should find new ways to meet the needs of an increasingly diverse population of learners. 
um, that we should explore personalised learning and how we can support it. And they said that, you know, back then, there were too many Scottish learners um, that really couldn't access uh, learning um, in order to improve, uh, improve outcomes, in order to improve learning outcomes. Um, what I would argue is that, you know, unless we get the approach to mobile technologies right, we're simply going to replicate all those old existing um, you know, issues and inequalities relating to the use of technology in the, uh, in, in, in the classroom. Um, it's too easy to be uh, seduced by the tech. It's too easy to say, oh, yeah, we love those, uh, those iPod devices. They're cool, they're sexy, get them in. Everybody wants them. Um, you know, I think uh, there is um, a need, and it's something that my team is, is about to, um, to begin. There is a need to actually um, get into that conversation uh, about you know, success for all in terms of the use of that mobile tech. Uh, rather than just uh, you know, being seduced by the tech, getting it into the classroom and, and really replicating what we've done in the past. We want the tech to make a difference to, uh, to teaching and learning. Joe, I think that's me. You're about to tell me zero minutes. That was, uh, yeah. Thanks very much for that, folks. And as I say, that um, presentation will be available. I don't promise I'm going to have the answer, by the way. But, uh. Hi, Jim. It's Linda Craner from Glasgow Caledonian University. Linda. enjoyed your talk, and I think it's amazing what's happening in schools at the moment uh, through uh, mobile technology. I feel that, from a university perspective, we're not fully aware of what's happening in schools, and I just wondered how we can extend the conversation and uh, make sure that we're ready for these pupils coming into university. Right. I'm glad you said that. There is actually a piece of work um, that's going to be taking place over this next six months through my team to actually get out there um, in terms of ITE, so initial teacher education, uh, and actually make sure that the universities are, um, are working with us and that we're working with the universities to make sure that uh, what's happening out there in schools and what we want to happen in schools, uh, there's that, that shared knowledge and that shared understanding. You know, I, I certainly say, you know, when, when my team launched on this particular piece of work, I'd kind of assume that government being government, government's good in terms of data, um, it's very rich in terms of data. It's just that at times it's not about the kind of data that we want, to be honest with you. you know, so the question, how are mobile technologies being used in Scottish schools, I honestly couldn't give you a, um, you know, a straight-up answer to that in terms of hard data and hard facts. So it is very much the beginning of that, uh, that exploration of the tech. Uh, you know, and certainly my team will be in touch in terms of uh, you know, working with universities. Okay. There was a, a lady up the back, so I'll ask, I'll get her in first. And, I, and, then you, and was that somebody else? Or we, was it, there's a lady... Thank you. Marion MacDonald, University of the Highlands and Islands. I would agree with you about uh, having worries about equality issues in using mobile devices. Uh, it's not just the device itself, having access to the device itself. There's the, the uh, mobile network access and there's bandwidth mm. issues. Yep. And I think possibly in school level, you probably would have uh, mobiles, particularly when you're talking about mobile phones, these devices and the contracts would be paid for by parents. But when you come to third level, the students are paying their own devices. So we find that it affects the content, the nature of the content that you're sending to devices. Um, you have to consider whether you're going to send massive video files or, or stream um, you know, large files to th these devices. There's quite a lot of issues to consider around that. Marion, definitely. I mean, I, certainly in terms of my previous school, um, you know, when the head teacher said every youngster's got a smartphone device, um, it was prior to Christmas, did a bit of research in school, 35% of the students had access to what we, what we would have defined as a, um, as a smartphone. Um, after Christmas, that number jumped to something like 52%. Uh, and when we moved through, I think you're quite right, in terms of those mobile contracts, um, you know, it's, uh, I think two years is the, uh, the average of those contracts, and you then see a jump in terms of the, uh, the mobile tech ownership. But yeah, absolutely, in terms of, uh, in terms of that tech. Hi. <coughs> yeah, Jason Norton, University College London. Um, with all the news this week about the you know, government's new initiatives into coding, into schools, trying to increase technology input, and we're seeing you know, BBC coming out with its year of code, how do you think that's going to affect what you're doing now? Do you think it's going to have a significant impact? Do you think that the drive that they're trying to pushing so quickly is going to 
negative impact because of the, the, the spread of technology? Well, I, well, I, I think the push for coding, Jason, um, is absolutely right, to be honest with you. You know, I, uh, I know it's only anecdotal. I sit in the train in the morning going into Glasgow and Edinburgh, and, you know, I'll hear people saying things like, oh, isn't it great, all those youngsters using their mobile tech. Wow, fantastic. In actual fact, all they're doing is using the mobile tech to be better consumers, to be honest with you. You know, to purchase those e-books and to purchase that music and to purchase those videos, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the, you know, for me, that, that, that whole approach to coding, um, it actually, um, it puts learners... It puts them back in the driving seat um, and it enables them to become creators rather than simple consumers of the, uh, the tech and all the services associated with the tech. You know, and again, I think from a Scottish perspective, um, a bit the way there is down south, um, there's a whole piece of work happening over this next year to actually push, push forward um, those agendas relating to coding and programming. Um, just wondering if... Um so you're doing, you're, you're beginning to do some work now with uh, the dovetailing into AGE. Um, would you think that the BYOD issue um, and issues of equity um, will be different there for for the adult, you know, for the 18 year olds and higher? Um, because you said that was an issue for younger kids. And also, just another quick one on the back of that: Have you seen Chromebooks? I mean, are are, are your people starting to use those at all? Um, I think if you look back on the uh, the Edinburgh um, pilot, um, they had used Chromebooks um, you know, through that particular school. Obviously, went for you know iPads for for particular reasons. Chromebooks, um, uh, yeah, um, I'm not really sure there's much I can say about Chromebooks to be honest with you. I've seen some schools that uh, have rolled them out really effectively, and other schools that have made you know that, that have made different decisions. Um, I, I would still say though, as long as you know. Those decisions are made um, around teaching and learning. Um, you know that, that's where we start. Um, it should it should never really start with the tech, except we want the tech to work. You know, and I've been in too many situations where the tech itself has become a barrier uh, to, to use in schools because you know you've been promised one thing, uh, and the reality is uh, is somewhat different. To be honest with you, I think the whole thing about generational use of smartphones is quite an interesting one as well. Um, I am not too sure, you know, that, that when we look at 18, um, 18 plus age range, that argument somehow that because they've grown up with the tech and they're used to it, is they use it in a more effective way than, uh, than for example, those of us that haven't. I'm just not too sure about those kind of, uh, those kind of arguments. Now, on that note, we're now moving into a, a coffee break, so we, oh, please sit back and jump through his presentation. I know you'll be sure, about as well if you want to ask him any more questions after the session. Thank nope. you. Thanks very much for that. Thank you.